You may have noticed there's a theme running through today, and the theme is light. And I want to ask the question, what will bring light to your life this Christmas? Now, this is a rather strange picture. I was driving up to Norfolk a few years ago on Christmas Day for a family Christmas, and there were lots of bright lights and bright colours, and before I knew it, I'd changed lanes. It was the intention of the lights and the colours. But I thought, Christmas is just like that. I mean, if you're like me, you can get knocked off course very easily, and the whole purpose and the point of the celebration of Christmas is completely lost to you. It's fun, family, friends, c- celebrations, presents, that sort of thing, and it can knock you off course. So, but Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Who f- whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So how can you invite Jesus into your Christmas this year to bring light to your life? And that begs the question of which Jesus you would like to invite in. Because there are many ways we can see Jesus. Is it gentle Jesus, meek and mild of the nativity play? It's a wonderful story, and I think it's wonderful that schools still do the nativity play in these politically correct days. It's good that children learn about God coming to earth at Christmas. The story is full of awe and wonder. Mary was spoken to by the angel Gabriel and said to her she would carry a baby, though she was a virgin. What a wonderful thing to happen, but let's be real about this. What would the neighbours have said? (laughs) she was engaged to be married and she was found pregnant you can imagine what the neighbours would say and she's an angel told me (laughs) I don't know if they would believe that her fiance Joseph when he heard thought I'll break off the engagement but an angel spoke to him in a dream and said no this child is from God and you're to marry her and he married her let's go back what would the neighbours say He's done the right thing by her. So there is the author of all creation coming to be born in very humble circumstances with animals, put in an animal feeder, and the legitimacy of his birth was doubted. It's not an auspicious arrival in the world, yet he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Very humble beginning. I told you, it's a story full of awe and wonder. The angels appeared to the shepherds, so working men out in the fields saw angels, good heavens, told them to go and worship this baby. They did. Sometime later, the wise men from the east, these were studied men, they realised a king had been born and they came and they worshipped and they brought gifts. I tell you, the story is amazing, but if your Jesus stays in the manger at Christmas doesn't really affect the rest of your life and you can when you pack away your nativity scene you can put it all away in the box and if you're not careful you can put Jesus away for the rest of the year and that doesn't really bring light into your life but he said he was the light of the world what about Jesus the teacher his teachings are unrivaled his wisdom has never been matched Excuse me. When the Pharisees came to him, they tried to trick him. They said, should we pay taxes to Caesar? That meant, should we give money to the hated Romans who are occupying our country? And he said to them, show me a coin. So they showed him a coin. He said, whose head is on it? And they said, Caesar's. He said, well, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. And they had no argument. Many times he defeated them with his wise teaching. He taught, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Do your charity in private. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Don't be a hypocrite. If you see a speck in your brother's eye, don't try and remove the speck from your brother's eye if you've got a plank in your own. And then he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. And from this we get the golden rule, do unto others as you would be done by. Wonderful teaching, solid teaching for a good society. But if you only follow Jesus 
as a good teacher, it's a very hard road to walk. This is the walk, the, the road of pull yourself up by your bootstraps, make a New Year's resolution. And how long do they last? If <laughs> well, I'll tell you, one year I said to the girls, I'm going to be nice, Dad, this year. <laughs> and you, I'll ask them. <laughs> If you're like me, you can no more reform yourself than you can hold back the wind. So if the Jesus that you want to bring light into your life is only the teacher, you've got a very hard road to walk. How about Jesus, the religious leader? You can go to church. You can give your money. You can be very good and you can give a percentage of your income by standing order. You can attend meetings during the week. You can recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. On the third day he rose again. I think I could recite it. Nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely wonderful scripture. But a little bit of testimony from myself. I was a churchgoer for many years. But it didn't bring light to my life. And on a Sunday morning when I left church, just as I could put the lid back on the nativity box, I could close the door. I so wanted to follow Jesus, but I closed the door on him on Sundays and I didn't let him into my life the rest of the week. There is another Jesus. And he's the one that went to the cross for us. He was sacrificed in our place. But to talk about this Jesus, I want to go back and talk about gentle Jesus, meek and mild. And you have to excuse me, got a cold, you know, it's that time of year, isn't it? Throat's getting sticky. You see, when we talk about <clears throat> gentle Jesus, meek and mild, our English language isn't quite as rich as the language that the New Testament was written in. And for meekness, they used a different word. It, the word was prayer, so I'll read it to you. I don't normally teach from the Greek, it's not my style, but this is really important. Meekness, prayer, power under control. It's a term used by the Greeks to describe a war horse that was trained to obey instantly and absolutely, no matter how great the confusion of the battle. So this is power under control. Let's have a look at war horse. This is a photo Anne took of me when I was out on my war horse the other week. (laughs) It's rather good, isn't it? (laughs) Thank you, Gareth, for finding that picture. I wish it was me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that <laughs> is quite, quite a likeness, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's be serious. <laughs> um, the, the war horse is full of power and spirit, but it's under the control of the rider. The rider has broken his will, but not his spirit, and the horse takes the bit. Jesus took the bit for us. His power and his spirit was, were intact, but he was led through an unjust trial. He was scourged, he was mocked, he was humiliated, and he was crucified. Jesus could have called on all the companies of heaven to defend him, but instead he followed his destiny and chose to die. And in his strength, Jesus was meek and mild. It's a good description. But... This begs the question, why did Jesus have to go to the cross? Why was he sacrificed? And we have to talk about the nasty word sin, and I'll describe it in my life. Look, if that was a picture of me, I'd be quite happy for you to be in the same room. I'm quite prou- I'd be, I would be proud of that. But if I was to put up on the screen some of the real me, some of the grotty stuff, some of the stuff I'm ashamed of, some of the thoughts, wrong thoughts, wrong things that I've said and wrong things that I've done, I wouldn't want to be in the same room as you. You see, I've thought some dreadful thoughts, I've said some hurtful things, and I've done some awful things. And you can say, well, so what? 
we all get it wrong. We all make mistakes. And yes, we do. But the so what is so important. You see, that wrong stuff creates a gap between me and a God who wants to come close to me. And if that gap is not dealt with, it goes on into eternity. But Jesus came and Jesus paid the price. Not for anything that he had done wrong. When Jesus went to the cross, it was for the stuff that we had done wrong. The creator of the earth allowed himself to become a man and then to be sacrificed for us so that we can go free. That, to me, is good news. It didn't end on the cross. Emmanuel, God with us, rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he lives with the Father in heaven. But... This is not an Easter message. If you want to know about the resurrection, come back at Easter. I'd love to be up here and do that. This is a Christmas message. And just a little while ago, we sang in O Little Town of Bethlehem, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. And we've got that word meek again. I'm not talking about soppy weak. I'm talking about people who have their power under control. I'm talking about people who, are, who can humbly admit that they've done it wrong. And to ask God to forgive them, those people can enter into a relationship with Jesus that will last not just for Christmas or next year, but it will go on into eternity. But how can it happen? There's a guy called Holman Hunt. He was a pre-Raphaelite artist. I only say that to let you know I read that. I don't know what pre-Raphaelite artists are. He painted this picture of Jesus at knocking on the door. And it's called The Light of the World. And it illustrates my talk quite well. He painted, painted this picture to illustrate the scripture. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. By that he means he will come to live with you. And somebody criticised the painting after it was done and said, that's not a door, there's no handle on it. And the artist said, well, that is the door of the human heart. The handle is on the inside. Jesus will never force his way in. He waits for the door to be opened. Jesus knocks on the door of our hearts and he wants to bring that light into your life. Another short testimony. I, I, when, <laughs> the end, I was a churchgoer and then I knew what it was to know God. And it happened on the 10th of November 1982 in the Methodist Church Hall. I went to a United Prayer and Praise meeting. And that evening, I opened my heart, and Jesus came in by the power of his Holy Spirit. And I tell you what, I've received such love and joy and peace that it lives with me today, and I was totally changed. That's what he means when he says, I am the light of the world, and you will never walk in darkness. That's what Jesus means. His Spirit will come to live with you. The same Spirit breathes life into that Christmas story. The same spirit makes you want to follow Jesus' teachings and bit by bit gives you the ability to do it. The same teaching breathes life into dusty religion. And when I read that creed, it set my heart going, but it used to just be something I said every Sunday. The Holy Spirit breathes life into all of that. So we're coming towards a conclusion. What will bring light into your life This Christmas? Will it be all the celebrations, the, the drinks, the parties, the food, the family, the festivities? All those things are good. And they celebrate Christmas well, and they can celebrate Jesus as well. But in themselves, they're not going to bring lasting happiness or satisfaction. Or will it be Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, who can bring light to your life, not just at Christmas? but forever. Now, you were all given cards when you came in. Can I ask you to open them? Can I ask you to hold your candles, please? 
in a moment, we're going to put all the lights out in here. And if you have children over there that might be frightened, can I ask you to go with them, please? Or if children are sitting in the room and you might be frightened, cuddle up to the person next to you, if you know them. (laughs) Okay, so parents of children over there, we are going to go completely dark. So if you'd like to uh, look after your children, that would be fine. If you think they're okay, that's fine. We're there. Right, you've all got candles in your hands, haven't you? But they're not a lot of use to you. You've got to light them. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that's the light I refer to, the light that the Holy Spirit brings to your heart. Let me ask the question, what will be the match that brings the light of Jesus into your life this year? It might be that you've heard enough already and you think, I'm ready to open my heart to him. You may have opened your heart to Jesus many times before. Or it might be new to you. But I'm going to invite you to do. The choir are going to come and sing again in a moment. And it's, uh, they're singing a, a song called Light of the World. I would ask you just to open your heart if you're ready. And let Jesus in by his spirit. And he will stay with you forever into eternity. It might be that you're not there yet. And as we heard, Mary pondered these things in her heart. You might be pondering these things in your heart. Well, look, you've got the card, and I want you to take it away. Because inside the card, there's that picture of Holman Hunt's light of the world. And the Bible verse, Jesus knocks on the door of your heart. Ponder this, and in a private place on your own, say, Lord, I do want to get it right. I do want to follow you. I invite you to do that. Or... It might be, you're thinking he's going far too fast for me. I came for a carol service. (laughs) What's all this about? But you've heard something and you think there's something in it. Well, for you, I want to talk about the Alpha course. We run Alpha courses here at the church. On the back of the card that you've been given are details of the Alpha course. Many, many people have done it. I think it's over a quarter of a million people in this country have been on Alpha courses. So what is it? It's a course where you can learn about Christianity, but more than that, you can come and ask questions. What's the purpose of my life? Where will I go when I die? Questions. You can't ask your friend. um, You don't normally sit down with somebody and ask a question like that. But on Alpha, all these questions are valid. No question is too simple. No question is too hard. We're running two courses in the new year. One on Monday mornings and one on Tuesday evenings. They'll start with food and drink. And then there'll be a short talk and then discussion. And this is just an ideal time to... Ask those questions. Get the answers of life that you need to. Many people have had their questions answered. Many people have come to faith on Alpha courses. So you're going to be able to relax now whilst the choir sing this lovely song, Light of the... Is it Light of the World? Is it? Let There Be Light. Let there be light. And as they're singing, Let There Be Light, those of you who want to, I'm just going to say sit there because Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and him with me. And if you want to open that door, just while the choir is singing, please go ahead and do that. Thank you very much.